So hello everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. My name is Martin. I'm a product manager at Fujitsu. And with me today there is uh, Roland. Uh, he's a uh, architect at HP and the technical lead of the Monasca project. And uh, next to Roland there is Vitek. Uh, he's a software engineer at Fujitsu and he will give us a demo later. So uh, I'll briefly introduce into the topic before going into the technical details. Uh, so for those of you, of you who are operating in OpenStack Cloud and who are not yet concerned about logs, I prepared this list that you can see on the left side. Uh, it shows the different components of OpenStack, the services and their implementations, and some supporting services like MongoDB and so forth. Uh, and on the right side of the list, you can see the number of logs or log files that each of these services have and write their, well, their application information to. And this list is not complete, but uh, it already counts up to 48 that you can have like on just a single node. So if we go into like a production OpenStack cloud where we have like where we deal with like multiple nodes up to several hundreds or even thousand nodes, this like the total number of log files or log or locations to which logs are written easily adds up to like a three or four digit number or even higher. So I think it's uh, needless to mention that um, like with the standard Linux tools like Grab or SAD. Uh, you cannot cope with this and you need like a more sophisticated solution, like a centralized log management solution. Okay, so this is about logging in OpenStack in general that concerns the operator. But I'm not only going to talk about this, I'll also talk about logging as an OpenStack service. So what does that mean? Um, so I think it's, uh, it's pretty obvious that logging is an issue in OpenStack and it's a, it's a basic need. And most of the vendors of OpenStack have reacted to that need by providing like kind of vendor specific, uh, specific solutions. Vendor specific solutions doesn't necessarily mean it's a proprietary solution. Most of those solutions are actually based on, on Elasticsearch. Anyway, like every vendor has kind of its own flavor how to do it. And so what we, what we want to achieve with this project is to consolidate all these like spe vendor specific things into one standardized OpenStack project or an OpenStack service. And um, if we look into the history, like pretty recent ris history of OpenStack, uh, we can see that this just happened with Ironic. So bare metal deployment, for example, was kind of a basic need for everyone who like seriously operates an OpenStack cloud. And every vendor like provided as kind of an add-on to the um, like community OpenStack version, like bare metal deployment technique. Foreman is one of them, for example. But other vendors have ever other ones. Most of them are based on tools like Puppet and Chef and so forth. And all these like vendor specific things, they have been now consolidated into one like official OpenStack project. Uh, it's called Ironic. And this is exactly what, would, what we want to do with uh, logging. So logging is a basic need. Everyone needs it who seriously operates an OpenStack cloud. So we want to have like an official project in OpenStack for that. And it's not just about that, it's also about logging as a service. Um, so uh, the idea here is to provide the same functionality that is like there for the operator to manage his logs, to provide it to the OpenStack tenants. Because if you start to have like several VMs, you have syslogs in these VMs. And at some point you'll also need like a, a similar solution. And the idea here is to, uh, to provide the same functionality that the operator has. Uh, to, to, the, to the tenants of OpenStack, uh, so they can just consume it in like a software as a service cloud model. Okay, next slide is a, yeah, now, now I'll talk a little bit about the technologies that we used here. One is Elk, or Elk Stack it's called. The other one is Monasca. And uh, so on the left side, I'll just briefly mention what the, what the ELK stack is about. Um, so I suppose that most of the people who, who are here already heard about ELK and 
So this is not going to be like yet another presentation on all the wonderful features of, uh, of Elasticsearch and Kibana. Um, but just for those who are not so familiar with these technologies, it's a combination of actually three base technologies. One of these is Elasticsearch. This is where all the, the, the data is stored, where all the log events are stored. It's a search engine on top, so you can do like pretty advanced search queries with this database. Um, the second technology in this stack is Logstash. Logstash is responsible for collecting, parsing and transformation of logs. So it's kind of a, a small agent that sits on a machine and grabs all the logs that, yeah, that are produced on this machine. And it also has capabilities to transform these logs into something like kind of more normalized. So uh, typically different applications, they have different styles of writing logs, uh, different flavors, and this is log stash is there to kind of like homogeneize this a little bit into something, yeah, something more common. And then the third one is Kibana. It's a dashboard, a pretty powerful dashboard. So first of all, it provides you like a search query interface. So you can type in Google-like searches, like, okay, give me all uh, log entries that um, contain the keyword error and um, that appear on a specific host or something like this. And um, in addition to this, you can do pretty advanced graphs. So you can spot trends, you can spot anomalies that appear in your, uh, um, in your logs and so forth. It's pretty powerful. And uh, so the combination of three, uh, these three technologies, it's called ELK stack and it's, it's pretty common. So if you start to look, do like a Google search on, okay, I need a centralized log management solution and uh, okay, what is there, uh, ELK is probably one of the first things you'll stumble upon. And I mean, it's so powerful that it's even, uh, it can, that it can even compete with uh, proprietary and expensive solutions such as Splunk. So on the right side, there is Monaska. Uh, it's the other technology. It's uh, an OpenStack project. It's not yet official, but it's in the process of incubation. So we'll hopefully see it uh, in the big tent of uh, OpenStack during the, in the next months. It's a monitoring as a, ser as a service solution. Uh, it's very performant, scalable, and fault tolerant. has pro basically everything that you need to run it as a cloud service. And uh, what is also being done, uh, basically driven by HP, uh, is to integrate a complex event processing engine to do like correlation between different events. And we also want to leverage this for our logs. We'll explain a bit later. Uh, we'll explain a bit more about this later on. And yeah, so the main players, you can see them on the right side. So besides Fujitsu and HP, there is also Time Warner Cable, who uses uh, Monasca uh, in their production OpenStack system for monitoring, uh, Cisco, Rackspace, and Cray. OK, uh, so we are integrating these two technologies. So why should we do that? Why don't we start like a separate project on logging? Uh, first of all, uh, this is like one of the not so tangible things. Uh, it's two related topics. So both uh, metrics, which Monaska is doing at the moment, and logs where that ELK is good at, um, uh, they kind of like give you a, a health status of your system. So uh, it tells you, okay, is my machine still running? Uh, is my CPU load too high, like in metrics or logs, like if your application starts to write like funny things into the application log, you should also know about it. And um, right, this is meant with the symbols that you can see here. So uh, basically you want to know, is everything okay or not? And if it's not okay, uh, I want to find the root cause as quick as possible so I can react and um, yeah, avoid any damage to my service. So apart from this, uh, we also want to have like a functional extension to ELK. ELK is very powerful by itself, but we want to extend it first of all uh, with multi-tenancy. So ELK, uh, like native ELK cannot really do multi-tenancy, so we want to extend it. Uh, we are programming an API for it. Um, we, want, we also want to achieve a higher performance and scalability because this is very important in OpenStack. 
And so one of the future things that we're working on at the moment is uh, the, the possibility to define alarms on logs. So you can say something like, okay, if there is a, a critical alarm that is written to any of my application logs, send me an email or let my smartphone ring. Uh, or you can also say if there are like the number of total warnings that appear per minute uh, exceed a certain threshold, uh, also send me an alarm. And also more, uh, more advanced things like the correlation between metrics and logs. So typically if your application log starts to write like errors into your log, and um, that has like as the root cause of this uh, is it like in the infrastructure, like your CPU load is too high, that causes your application to write things like um, uh, timeout errors or uh, timeout errors or something. Uh, you can aggregate. You can, for example, aggregate these alarms. So instead of multiple alarms, you get just a single one. Okay. So now I spoke a little bit about. Uh, so what we want to do and why we want to do it. And now we'll go a bit into the technical details and Roland, uh, he will start with this and tell us a bit more about the Monasca project and the metrics processing therein. Testing, one, two, three. Uh, how many people here know about the Monasca project? Just a show of hands. Okay, uh, quite a few, but um, I'll do a very, very brief overview of it. There's going to be another session immediately after this that will go into more details on it if you would like to know about that. Less details on the logging side, more details just about Monasca in general. Um, okay, so Today, uh, Monasca is very focused on monitoring as a service and primarily a focus on metrics. Uh, so we have a first class RESTful API for monitoring. Uh, it supports authentication via Keystone and um, everything within Monasca is scoped to a tenant, so multi-tenancy. It's highly performant, scalable, and fault tolerant. It's a uh, microservices message bus based architecture which provides flexibility, extensibility, and load balancing. Microservices are a fairly new concept. Uh, it's come out in the last couple of years. Uh, so what, what do we mean by microservices? We have small, relatively autonomous components. They can all be deployed separately. Communication occurs over a network. Uh, normally people think of that as HTTP. In our case, uh, it's usually over the um, message bus, which is based on Apache Kafka. And these components can be deployed independently. In fact, you can run Monasca with or without all the components that are in the architecture diagram, or add your own components. Some of the technologies that we use within Monasca, it's uh, built on um, Apache Kafka is our message queuing technology within OpenStack. RabbitMQ is you know, very popular, but we have not chosen RabbitMQ for our service. We're using Kafka. Kafka was developed by a company called LinkedIn, uh, and uh, they use that within uh, their company for you know, their messaging. Um, another technology we use is Apache Storm, which is used in our threshold engine. Apache Storm was developed by Twitter, and Apache Storm is a uh, supports a computational engine. You describe a, uh, a graph or a topology, and within that topology, you have uh, elements in there called bolts that do calculations. Um, we also uh, support a database called InfluxDB. InfluxDB is a time series database. And then we have some other technologies we're using, uh, so latest in real time streaming and big data infrastructure. Uh, the API is really today focused on metric storage, retrieval, uh, thresholding, or alarms, and notifications. And we have some things that are in progress, obviously the logging that you're hearing about today, but the uh, real-time streaming complex event processing engine is in process. It's in, in progress for about a year now, um, so hopefully we'll be getting to wrap that up in the next few months. So the overall architecture for Manasca today. Um, there's a lot of similarity too when you look at the, the way we're approaching events and logging. But within this architecture, see up in the upper right 
corner is a, an agent. The agent is typically deployed on a system that you're monitoring. Uh, but if you're doing what we would call active checks, like monitoring systems or HTTP endpoints, you would have the agent deployed on another system or multiple systems. Uh, so the agent will monitor the system, uh, uh, typically you know, we're collecting system metrics like CPU, network, memory, disk space. It can monitor services like MySQL, uh, Apache, or OpenStack services. It supports a StatsD daemon that's built into it, a few other things are there. Um, so the agent sends into the API. Uh, the diagram, there's you know three boxes here. This is all highly available and fault tolerant. So that API be deployed across, typically in our deployments, we think about doing things in terms of three nodes. And the metrics come in, they are published to the message queue, which is Apache Kafka. And that gives us uh, a bit, uh, ability to basically store those messages, or those metrics in this case. Uh, Apache Kafka is a fully durable message queue. Um, so the, the, all the metrics are stored to disk immediately. And um, it's also clustered. So basically a, uh, Kafka is running across three nodes and clustered. Now we have three components down there in this diagram. Sometimes I show more than three components. Uh, but the persister consumes message off of the message queue. It'll do batch writes into whatever database in the lower right uh, box there are shown metrics and alarms database. That's typically InfluxDB. Uh, we support Vertica, which is a proprietary database. And we are working on uh, supporting Cassandra. The threshold engine then consumes from the message queue the metrics and evaluates whether the metrics exceed certain thresholds or whatever alarm sort of calculations you want done. Uh, if those thresholds are exceeded, then it'll publish another message back to Kafka, which will be an alarm state transition event. And that'll be consumed by the notification engine. It'll decide whether it should send an email, a pager duty, do, uh, pager duty alert, or a um, webhook in our case. Um, the alarm state transitions are also consumed by the persister and then stored in the database as well. So we have a history of all of our events. In the lower right, MySQL, it's our configuration database. That's where we store all of the alarms and notifications that we want the system to actually calculate. We support, uh, we have a panel that's uh, integrated in with Horizon. And uh, we also support a um, time series uh, visualization dashboard called Grafana. Uh, today we support Grafana 1.0, and as of yesterday, uh, Time Warner Cable has uh, posted code to support Grafana 2.0. Uh, it's not quite done yet, but it's up there and ready to be used and tested. Uh, probably in a couple of weeks that'll be complete. And then we also have a Python uh, client, just like every OpenStack project has a py uh, Python client. Uh, so anyway, that's basically the architecture. Okay, complex event processing. Am I going too long? All right. Okay, good. Sometimes I can talk forever. Um, there's a lot to go through here. But, uh, okay, so our complex event processing, this is work in progress. Uh, we're primarily working on this uh, with Rackspace. Uh, some of you might have heard of the StackTac project. Uh, so there's StackTac v3, that's sort of the libraries that we've that we're using within our event processing engine. We have an events API, similar to the metrics pipeline. Uh, there's a, an events pipeline, or API, that we can store uh, and query events from. We can specify transforms on those events. So you can take an event, uh, typically with the, our, our use case is typically focused on OpenStack notifications. Uh, we would take that notification and transform it in some way, reduce it, uh, notifications can be very large. Uh, you want to normalize the data, maybe convert timestamps, things like that. And we want to take those events and then uh, create streams out of them, where we'll filter those events, group them by some criteria, like a tenant ID or a instance ID. And then when certain conditions occur, we want to do some calculations. Uh, in our, one of our canonical use cases is like when a VM is created, 
that VM goes through a number of events, right, about 24 events that occur over the life cycle of just creating a VM. What we typically would do is want to calculate the uh, elapsed time between the end event and when the VM is actually active and when it was actually started up. And then from that, we'll create a metric. And then we publish that metric back into Kafka, and then we can operate on that metric. We can alarm on it, we can visualize it, we can store it away, and ultimately create alarms for, uh, when, for example, your VMs exceed some uh, average time that you had, you know, if, if VMs were taking two minutes, and all of a sudden it was three minutes, that's something you might want to know. Okay, so this is all in progress. Uh, this is the event processing architecture. The uh, reason why I'm showing this is just because it looks similar to the metrics architecture, and that's why we think doing this also with logging is good. We have similar technologies. We have similar, similar architectural and design patterns. The components operate a certain way, and so that's in part the story of why we think this makes sense. All right, I'm going to turn it over back to Martin now. Yeah. My turn again. So uh, now I'll talk a bit about the technical technical details uh, in on logging. Um, so this is just a brief uh, like summary, a brief wrap up of what I uh, what I talked about before. So important is it's built on Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, also known as ElkStack. Um, it's basically you can say like the most popular uh, open source technology. Uh, so we take that uh, because basically because people like it and there is also a huge ecosystem around it. Um, we add some stuff to it, uh, for example, an API um, and a Logstash output plugin that can communicate to the API to facilitate multi-tenancy and some, some degree of security to run it as, an, as a service. And um, yeah, uh, we also like in by integrating this into Monasca, we also leverage uh, proven, like the proven technologies that we have in uh, Monasca, such as uh, Kafka that uh, Roland just mentioned, and also some like common design patterns that we will see on an, on an extra slide later. And so the, uh, the added value that you have to like a pure ELK stack is in essentially logging as a service, greater scalability and performance, and also alarms and logs. So that was just a brief wrap up. Um, so this is the architecture um, that we are targeting. So this is um, where we are almost are. So you can see on the, uh, on the top right corner, uh, you can see Logstash. It's the log collector, essentially. So this, this is like the agent that sits on the machine and collects everything. Um, we wrote an output plugin, so it has quite a pretty powerful pluggable uh, like plugin architecture uh, that posts logs here to the log API. It's a, it's a REST API. Um, that goes into Kafka then. How can I do this? Like this. That goes on to Kafka then. Um, we also have a log transformer that can normalize the logs and transform it into whatever format you like. Um, puts it back to Kafka and uh, then there is a persister that takes uh, these logs from Kafka and stores them into Elasticsearch. And then on the top left we can see Kibana. It's the dashboard that I mentioned before that is there for like uh, analyzing, uh, accessing these logs and so forth. So uh, there is also an additional arrow that you, can, uh, that you can see here. This is where we not are today, but uh, what we would like to do is to also provide uh, the possibility to query Elasticsearch directly from the outside search, so uh, from the outside world. So. Um, Maybe Kibana, it's good for like human interaction. It's a pretty powerful tool, but for like, if, if you want to run this as a cloud service and you want to do some like automated uh, analysis of your logs from, from outside, um, you'll also have to need the possibility to query these logs. 
Uh, so it may be that in the future this bar, the REST API, uh, is drawn to the, to the left here. So everything that Kibana queries from Elasticsearch uh, goes over the API. But uh, this is still in discussion, so we don't really know if we're going to go that way. Or another pos possibility may also be that we like design our own query language. Uh, so Logly, I don't know if you know Logly, it's like a public cloud uh, logging service uh, that is based on Elasticsearch as well. So they designed their own query language, which is probably which probably will be like kind of similar to Elasticsearch, but just provides a subset of what Elasticsearch can actually do in order to yeah basically for security reasons. So. Elasticsearch has not be really been designed for multi-tenancy, so if you do a query that looks like, okay, give me like all the events every two seconds, Elasticsearch will basically freeze and uh, not do anything anymore because it's totally overloaded. And we would like to avoid that, so we want to like um, yeah, restrict a little bit the access uh, that, say, the outside world uh, has to uh, Elasticsearch. Um, Okay, this is a sequence diagram. So on the top you can see a sequence that uh, is basically what I just explained. It's re relatively straightforward. So you have the log collector that is based on Logstash. Logstash uh, with the Monasca output plugin uh, publishes these, API, uh, th these logs uh, to the log API. Uh, that goes to Kafka. Uh, then the log transformer uh, pulls these, transforms into it into something normalized that goes to Kafka uh, again, and then the, uh, taken into the persister and from the persister into Elasticsearch. So on the, in the red box on the uh, on the bottom, you can see where we want to go uh, in order to provide alarms on logs. So. Uh, we basically leverage the existing thing, the, uh, the existing stuff, the existing technologies that we have here. So uh, there is not really an additional implementation necessary. Um, so we use, uh, th that's our plan uh, at least. So we use the log transformer, we use logstash to make an event um, out of these logs ent uh, log entries. And we can filter specific log entries. So we can say, okay, uh, Publish an event on Kafka uh, if, like, the error log uh, if the log contains the keyword error, for example. And event uh, event in this uh, in this context means an event that the uh, events engine that uh, Roland, uh, the complex event engine uh, that Roland mentioned before, which is uh, stack tag, uh, can understand. So this is the job of uh, of the log transformer, and then the event engine. Uh, is there to transform multiple events into a metric. So it can count events, so you can make a metric that looks like, okay, number of logs that contain the keyword error per minute or per hour, and publishes it back to the um, Kafka queue. And then there is the threshold engine, which is part of the existing Monasca, uh, that uh, with which you can define an alarm on this. So you can say, okay, if this number exceeds like five error logs per minute, send me an alarm, or just one. <laughs> um, and then the threshold engine, um, if this threshold is exceeded, uh, creates another alarm that then goes via Kafka into the notification engine that you can see here on the right. And the in the notification engine, you can well create notifications that are that are like emails. So uh, or uh, we also int have integration with page duty. Or if you want to like trigger some automated process, um, you also have um, uh, webhooks. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, this is uh, the last slide about architecture. It's uh, kind of a summary, and uh, it uh, looks uh, it, it shows how these like three, say three big functionalities that we have uh, in Monasca um, are kind of combined. And uh, what is important is uh, like the central role of the message queue. So it's like a message 
well, we call it like message bus driven architecture. So the message bus is that uh, the, like the component that basically connects everything. Um, which makes sense because uh, as, as I just uh, explained in, in the use case for alarms and logs, we take like components from all, from all of these like three big uh, functionalities and we combine them in order to like create new use cases and to extend the entire functionality. Yeah, and it should also show uh, like um, the design pattern, like the architectural design pattern that we used like for all of these three components. So uh, you have basically the collection of data here on the top. It goes into an API. The API publishes everything on, uh, on the bus. And then here below you have se uh, several um, Consumers, cons consumers of this queue that uh, like process your data or analyze your data or do whatever you want uh, with this data, and it should also show the extensibility of this uh, um, of this architecture. So uh, I'm pretty sure some of you may think of like use cases uh, that we haven't even thought of. So. Uh, if you want to do some like more advanced stuff, it's pretty easy in this architecture to create like a, a new um, consumer that sits below here. And you just hook it into the message queue. Um, we are creating a system that collects all the data that is relevant of your OpenStack cloud and uh, even more than this of your entire data center. So the data collection here on the top is not, uh, is not limited to OpenStack. Um, and you can create whatever consumer you like to draw uh, whatever conclusion you're interested in from all this data. Right, so this was about architecture and this is Vitek's part and he will now give us a uh, live demo. Thank you, Martin. Hello, everyone. So yeah, I will show you the uh, live demo of uh, our lock management solution, current state. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> so let's uh, log in to Horizon. Let's go operator. So here is my Monasca overview panel. Uh, what we see here, we are monitoring several services and uh, uh, metrics from two different hosts. Everything is green, so everything uh, is working fine. What I would like to do now is uh, simulate some hypothetic uh, disaster scenario. Um, yeah, so... Um, Really visible. Oh, yeah. Can you see that? Oh, more or less. So I'll just uh, stop the neutron server and append the line to the to the neutron server log file. Okay. So here we go. And um, where I would like to start with is. Uh, our lock collector, so it's a lock stash. I will show the configuration, agent conf. Yeah. So as input, we define the the um, lock files uh, locations, and uh, we, oops, we uh, append the the, the type. Uh, of if each of the logs, so we can easier find them again in, in Kibana dashboard. Then uh, we have a filter section when, where we define the match patterns for uh, multi-line entries. Uh, so uh, we collected like uh, several types of match patterns for uh, most common log formats. And here, at last, we have uh, our contribution is the configuration of the Logstash output plugin. It uh, authenticates with uh, Keystone and sends log entries to Monasca Log API. Additionally, we provide here uh, metadata in form of dimensions. Uh, here, I just put the host name and uh, geographic 
coordinates of Tokyo, but uh, you could really uh, put here anything, uh, any information that the uh, operator finds to be interesting and important. So let's come back to our uh, monitoring UI. We can see we have here alarms in the networking service. Let's take a look. Yes, we have a process check alarm launched and HTTP status. Uh, we can see the dimensions for these alarms, which give us some additional information to that. As Martin said before, we want to, um, we plan to integrate uh, event processing for log management so that we can also create alarms for, for logs, mm, but it's future. Yeah, and uh, so this this is just uh, metrics. But if we want to investigate the problem, we want to uh, find our logs to the problem in one place and to find them quickly. So uh, that's why we integrate the <coughs> log management uh, dashboard in in the monitoring UI. At this point, we verify the Keystone credentials, the Keystone role, so that we have a fine control of uh, which users uh, can view the, the alarms, which users can define the alarms, and which users can view the logs. So we come to the Kibana dashboard. I will not go too much into detail about Kibana, but what I would like to show is that you can easily find all the information which we supplied in the in the log agent, like uh, host name, uh, message itself, application type, log level, which is extracted automatically from the from the message. We can find it easily in Kibana. So Kibana is a powerful tool for for visualization and. Uh, filtering of your Elasticsearch data. And you can create fancy dashboards. Like, uh, it's highly configurable, so every operator can can uh, create his own uh, dashboards. Uh, here on the right, we can see the, the locations of, uh, of my log agents. On the left, in this donut uh, chart, we see the distribution of log entries between the, the servers and between the application types. Uh, here is the histogram with uh, log level information and at last is, uh, are the log entries itself with metadata. So let's look for our error. Um, let me see which service was it? Neutron, right? Uh, it's not in my top five, so I will have to. Oh, yeah, I typed it once already. Surprise. Yeah, so now I can see only the logs for Neutron. And I can see there were some logs and some error at the end. I can filter that to this time range. Yes, here is the error. So and apply. Here it is. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you all for your attention. Um, if you want to get in touch in with us, uh, you can drop us an email or what is even better, we have weekly meetings uh, every Wednesday. Um, if you want to get the code and some more uh, information, you can visit our wiki page. And as Roland said before, there is a, a talk about Monasca that covers more metrics and complex event processing on the room nearby. And we also have a team meeting this afternoon. And I think, well, one minute left. I don't want to. I think we have time for one, just one question. <laughs> uh. I guess I'm closer to the mic. Um, yeah, so, so, so it was lucky, sorry. So I've, I've got two questions, really. I'll make them super quick. Uh, one yeah. is 
how, how do you handle the chicken and egg problem of having your m monitoring solution running on the platform that you want to monitor? Uh, that, that would be the first question. And the other one regarding the CEP engine is, uh, are, are you using an existing uh, open source technology such as Esper, for example? Or are you planning to? Uh, yeah. well, Take the mic. The mic. Uh, okay, so for everyone, it's uh, Stack Tech. Um, I'm not so sure about your chicken and egg question, honestly speaking. Uh, so, so if I'm if I'm monitoring my infrastructure on the same set of hosts and services ah. that you know may go down, then I may lose all the information about the monitoring infrastructure. So you could set up a parallel monitoring infrastructure, but then that needs to be monitored as well. So how how do you handle this? Yeah. <laughs> No, so so uh, typically uh, Monasca would be deployed on on an uh, on an additional infrastructure that like uh, runs next uh, to to your OpenStack system, uh, and uh, it's also fault tolerant. So if if one of your stuff goes wrong, uh, so like if your one of your fa uh, er uh, of your servers fails on that Monasca runs, uh, like the application can basically handle this. Uh. And uh, we also have like self-monitoring capabilities, uh, so Monasca can also take care of itself. If you want to be like really highly uh, uh, like fault tolerant and highly available, um, I think it probably makes sense to have like two availability zones that where like every monitoring just monitors the other one. So, okay. So I'm sorry, time is over. Uh, thank you all for your attention.